Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Hello, who are you? All right. <laughs> I'm Ariel. I work at Fox. My name is Sean Hughes. People call me the Polar Bear. I am the main mechanic for Yeti Fox Factory Racing Enduro Team. I'm Grant Sides. I'm with Trek Factory Racing uh, Downhill Program. My name is Matthew Spad. I run the Kona Bikes uh, Gravity Team. This is Alex, which helps me do mechanic stuff. How's it going, guys? Uh, my name is John Paul. I'm with Intense Factory Racing. Hello, I'm Ben Arnett. I'm the head mechanic for the YT Mob. Everyone's got their own personal favorite thing. I'm a big Allen key guy. Uh, Nipex pliers. A crimp for the end of the cables. So having a vice that has, uh, that's very precise is important. My little DU removing tool to get my bushes out. The 3D printed brake piston cleaner tools. Eight Allen wrenches, I have a full set, everything from eight down to two. Pretty much don't go anywhere without them. This is always in either my toolbox or my bag that goes to the top with Charlie. Uh, another thing super important with downhill racing is a tire gauge. This one's from Capius Components. Super accurate. Yeah, this is one of my most important tools for sure. This is another favorite tool. It's pretty basic, but it's from a company called Wheel Fanatic, and it's for driving in uh, spoke nipples and spinning them from the back. You got your DU push in the bottom of your shock, or the top. Just slides in. And you just crank it up. I really like this decade chain tool. Um, feels again like feels really good in, in your hand and fun to use. So pretty simple. And uh, been doing this for 17, maybe more years. And uh, this multi tool, Kyle Straight will make fun of me, but and as he's done in the past. But I love it. The Torx, the eight mil, and uh, and the back scratcher. Pretty mean setup. What kind of case is that? It looks like a gun case. <laughs> it is. It's a rifle case, Pelican 1700. <laughs> so long, no layers, which is nice. A lot of guys have toolboxes with foam cutouts and they'll have layers. Um, but with the same footprint, you can have a gun case. You can have a small workspace inside of your toolbox if you so choose. I kind of keep my toolboxes like, so that it's kind of dynamic. And so I always have like a, this is my quick go-to for what I'm working on right now drawer. And then it's just kind of everything else is backlogged in its spots and I can find it. Those are all my go-to tools between this layer, this layer, and this layer that I keep out. That's where I keep all my um, rider settings and stuff like that. It's just a tablet, nothing crazy, but cool little logo and top secret thing. It's a 1450. It's a nice small case and uh, bits and pieces out of, I got some carbon fiber sheeting there. So lids that, Fold up. I like to have everything, like my top pallet here, everything that I use pretty much all the time, apart from mountain keys, is sort of set up here, ready to go. That's sort of what I did. That's kind of the thing in my toolbox is make everything as minimalistic as possible. It's got a couple of different pallets with um, all my different tools in it. And in the lid, it's got a tablet, which I use for putting uh, settings in for the riders. I keep that all on a uh, cloud so the riders can access it anytime they want. On Charlie's bike, he likes to have total control over his brake levers. For that added extra bit of confidence, we use skateboard grip tape. I just take a piece of grip tape, cut it to right about 35 millimeters. Once I cut out my little piece, I just round off the edges with my scissors. I put it on the curved part of the lever and about halfway into the main part of the lever. If you don't wear gloves and your hands get a bit sweaty, it's really nice. It will wear through your finger a little bit, but it'll give you a nice callus. Uh, if you do wear gloves, you will go through a few pairs of gloves for sure. This is such a simple thing, but if you've ever had a bike where the headset comes loose a lot, um, which is, seems to be a lot of people, a lot of people will grease the, like, the threads but it's mega, mega important and will make a huge difference to your headset ever coming loose. If you get a bit of grease and put it under the head of the bolt, that means that when you turn that, it's turning on a little layer of grease rather than being dry. And what that means in effect is you can add more, you're adding more preload to your headset for the same amount of torque that you're putting in here. And it also seems to stop it wanting to loosen off on your headset come loose. He's yeah. using that on higher sidewalls. Oh, yes, yeah. they won when you're washing it. When you get the mud on the tires and you put it on the sidewall, the mud leaks off the sidewalls. Yeah, we just put it on a bit so, of a rag and rub it on. and Yeah, mud doesn't stick, so it becomes 
the bike essentially doesn't have uh, 10 pounds of mud on there. So we'll put it all the way down, like the down tube and the side tires and the, and the rims and the But not the tread. Not the tread. No, no. Depends if we like the rider or not. Yeah, <laughs> That's it. Doesn't look like much, but what it actually is, um, believe it or not, is it's parts from all of, a lot of my sponsors, like this guy is a modified Chris King preloader that I've pressed a Chris King crown race onto the bottom of it and fixed the bottom of it. And that's a piece of Fox Fork steerer tube cut off. And that's obviously a um, Chris King top cap. Fork off to service. And with this guy, introduce your headset crown race and spaces as normal. And obviously as if the stem was attached to the handlebars and, it, and obviously the bike, you put your stem on, just lock one bolt in, you don't have to do too much there. And then this guy, it's the same bearing crown race as my headset bearing takes. It goes up in there, it goes through there. So this way, if you have handlebars on, you can still bleed the brake because the, the handlebars are as firmly attached as normal. So this is just acting as if I have a headset or a, cr or a steer tube in the bike. Thanks so much for joining today, folks. I really hope you enjoyed connecting with some of the world's best mechanics out there. Hey, if you have any other cool pro tips or your favorite tool that we didn't cover today, let me know in the comments below. I'm keen to know, what do you have to add to the list?